Yeah! Hey guys! Boogie Welcome Boogie. to another episode of Talking Trucks! 10 for Roger! Yep, uh, my name is Andre Smirnoff. I'm the managing editor of TFL Truck, and with me... I'm not Andre. I am Kent with MrTruck.com. Well, thanks for being here. I know uh, a lot of people have truck questions, so I'm glad you're here. I am too. Um, as always, guys, you can use Super Chat on YouTube here during this live show to support us. Uh, we can put your name on the hood here in our studio for five bucks. 10 bucks gets you a sticker, 25 bucks gets you a patch, kind of like yours. Nice. And of course, ooh, I'm sorry. Well, actually, I want to ring a bell for Luke because Luke, he already donated sorry, two bucks. Money. What is that right. smell? Are we on fire? No, that's me. I'm Dude, sorry. I've been running. It smells like fire. No, we're okay. We're okay. Uh, do you guys see fire? Uh, hat for 50 bucks donation, guys. So support us. And if you have a burning question, you can always. Uh, or any question for that matter, put it in the chat room. If you want to bring our attention to it, it helps to do a little donation, but we'll try to get to everything. That's right. We don't have donuts anymore. We just don't have the money for it. You know, uh, I'll, I'll get you a, a sandwich after the okay. show. Okay, that'll be good. That'll be but good. I want to hit the news first. Uh, we had a couple of um, exclusive news Lots that TFL, news. TFL Chuck found. I heard uh, you know a lot of leaky people. Is that uh, true? Yeah, you know, people sent us some insider information, and we tried to use it the best we could. You know, CIA you wanna... calls them moles. Moles. CIA says those are moles. Well, infiltrated people. Okay. No, but these are regular people that found some information and they gave it to us. And they you like start... you. They like you. Do you want to start with the Ranger on the next page? Because, oh, well, we haven't even uh, covered this page. How are we going to the next page? No, it doesn't matter. Luke donated money. He wants us to start oh. with the Ford Ranger. Okay. So well, they... anyway, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, the Ranger... We saw some of Texas State Fair. Yep. And we're going to be driving those uh, in December. L December of this year. And they're yes. coming on sale in January. So we're just a couple of months away. But the big news in this instance is uh, payload, towing numbers, gross vehicle weight, and gross combined weight. Yeah, now the two will drive with, ex with a, what do you call it? It's a super cab. It's not an extended cab. And that has 1,840 pounds for two-wheel drive. What's the four-wheel drive have? Did this guy not know? Uh, or well, actually, if you go to tfltruck.com... Oh, you've got all the specs. We have more specs there. Of course, cool. the heavier the truck is, the less the payload, right? Right, and so, yeah, exactly. But that's like the towing capacity is interesting because they only show one towing capacity of 7,500 pounds, which is class leading. Yeah, that's cool. Guessers. We, know, we know what everybody else is doing, so right. yeah. But that's, uh, that's very good, and that didn't matter if it's a crew cab or a super cab. And a GVWR, which I'm interested in, was 6050 Now, that's what the IRS looks at for Section 179, whether you can write it off in one year. It's right at 6,000 pounds. And I was really glad that they heard us talking about that, and they've got that at, at 6050 yep. Now, the gross combined weight rating, it's you and a trailer or you and whatever you're doing, is 12500 which is pretty good for that size. Right. But I think the big news is here, and uh, this came out of their vehicle guide for 2019. Yeah. So yeah. It, it looked very official, um, and I think it, we got an early look at that, basically. Yeah, since it's coming out you know, in just a few months, they've got, all that stuff's got to be out there. They don't print it in the last minute. It's there. So yeah. whoever saw it, send it over to us. But you know, if you look at the Tacoma, the Colorado, and the Frontier, all the other mid-sized guys, this beats them. It, you know, it doesn't beat them is on the uh, the Duramax diesel, the 7,700 pound on a with trailer. A GM. So that's two, 200 pounds more with a four banger. They're both four bangers. One's a diesel, one's a turbocharged. David Compton just donated two more dollars. Thank you very much. And when you're talking about gas mid-sized trucks, this Ranger looks to be class leading on payload and towing well, of capacity. Of course, you know, when you put out a new model, well, you sure don't want to be in fourth place. No. You always want to be class leading, right. so everybody does that. I mean, we don't know the power. Canyon we do. don't even know the horsepower and torque yet. You sure? Well, not officially, no. We don't. Uh, okay. Unless you know something. Well, I can't talk about it. But okay. anyway, yeah. Right. So that's very good, and you know, that makes General Motors and Ford the only ones that have over six thousand pounds GBW, which is what I'm interested in. And that's that's good. That's good to know that, and it's coming soon. All right. Well, let's 
talk about the Sierra news, another exclusive piece of news here. Um, we got a look at the uh, their Canadian dealership um, information. Yeah. And um, it talked about power numbers for the new three liter straight six Duramax diesel. Everybody's interested in that engine because you know it's it's unusual to be an inline six. Everybody else is going V six, and here they come out with a straight six. And you know we didn't know what the power was, but it looks pretty impressive. You look at the numbers on there. I think it's class leading torque, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, power too. So the numbers we saw, and these numbers may not be final, right? Yeah. But this is the ballpark that we saw in that document. 282 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. Of course, that 3-liter straight 6 has made it to a 10-speed. We knew that before. But that engine was announced in January, remember? In That's Detroit. right. We kept waiting. We kept waiting and waiting. And if we're finding the 2.7, seven, we're going to get to drive that what, next month. Right. And we're still waiting for yeah, the diesel. Yeah, so the diesel may be right. way past that. I don't you know. It takes a long time to, to develop that. But... You know, and that's I'm getting news from different dealer sources too. So that seems to be a, a leaky area. But so, <laughs> so 282 horsepower is way more than the competition. You know, it's about 10 percent more. So Ford yeah. is at 250, right? Yeah, and then when you get up to the 450 torque, that's more than anybody. And that 10-speed auto, it, it all is looking so good. And that means that the only diesel in that class with an 8-speed is the Ram. Will be the Ram, yeah, you're have and the, the Ram said now. they told us that Ram EcoDiesel second generation is coming in 2019 as well. With a 10 speed, or is it no? With an eight, with I an think eight it's speed. an eight speed. Okay. So we'll have a good competition the next year. You know, Ford is already on sale. Uh, GM truck and Ram truck diesels for half tons are coming. So that's yeah, really good. Yeah. Really good news for all the customers, all right. the fans of trucks. And that was a leaky from a GMC uh, dealer GMC set. Sierra specifically. Yeah. Right. So it looks like it's going to be available on just about everything, you know, the Except for the base model. Oh, it's right. The elevation. I keep thinking that's a base model, but it's really not. It's just it's a, a dress up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. More options on. Okay. Well, and that's, also, the that's... two more numbers that came out were 7,800 pounds for max towing on a diesel GM. Uh huh. Uh, which doesn't sound like a lot. That m number may change. That is weird because all those half ton full sizes are not like big numbers on a diesel. Well, Ford is. Ford's got some 11,000 number, don't they? they 11,400. Yeah, they've got a crazy number on theirs, but uh, the rest of them don't. Well, that makes me happy because that means an SLE, which is almost a base model, that has the diesel. So many new cool things come out, and you got to buy the most expensive truck to get it. Right. I'm so happy that you can get it on the SLE. We don't know about price yet, but in that document, it also said 28 MPG on the highway. Uh, Ford base diesel. Are you all right? Yes. Ford base diesel has... Uh, a rating of 30 mpg so we'll see that so that's less than fords also yeah, yeah. um so um we have a question here in the chat room from simjet 22 um uh, they say any news on the three liter duramax exhaust brake uh we don't know a lot about it yeah you and, know i yeah, hope it will have one they're not leaking and i you know i can push a few people and maybe get that information but you know it's it's really weird because gm has it on their midsize mm -hmm. So if they're going to follow character, I would think they would put that exhaust brake on this 3-liter. I'm going to bet that they are. Okay, but we don't know for sure. No, we I don't would know agree for with sure. you. Yeah. D-Money 2201 just donated 5 bucks. Thank you, D-Money. I'm going to put well, you Well, that's in awesome. Here. We're going to be able to get uh, maybe hot dogs next time. Uh, hot dogs, and I'll buy you a sandwich. We got hot dog hats from some weird event we had to do. Yeah, we, we, so. we're, going to go, we're going to update you on our trip that we recently had, and we're working on that video. At the end of this show, we give, we'll right. give them an update. We stopped by Warren Buffett's house. He lives in a barn. Who would have guessed? The what? richest guy in the country lives in a barn. Yeah. It's a brown barn, but it's a barn. Okay. So, D-Money, thank you very much. Um, Juan says hello. There's Newton Washington, John A. Drott. Um, thank you for joining, guys. Uh, David Compton, um, multi-purpose reviewer, thank you guys for being here, as always. Um, well, we're this trying is, to get to the questions here. That's good, because that's what we want to do. We want to start getting a little more serious and start answering all the questions we can and give you real detailed questions or answers to these questions. And so, this multi -purpose is reviewer is asking, we, is it the diesel straight six or is it the V8 that can run up to uh, like on one cylinder? With a dynamic fuel management, that's the well, V8. Yeah, and it turned into a two-cylinder thing. They figured out, I think, too much vibration in one cylinder. Right, they so actually have adjusted yeah. that. Yeah. But they yeah. have 17 different drive modes on their 5.3 liter V8 and the 6.2. Yeah. Um, so the computer can adjust how many yeah. cylinders are firing. Yeah, they figured these computers out. They do so many things. They can do them on the fly. They can just do everything on their own. You know, they'll be driving us around pretty soon. So final piece of news that just came out today. Uh, Nissan unveiled... Uh, 
uh, one-off truck, but it's really cool, so I wanted to add it here. And you could see it behind you. Wow. This is the Nissan Ultimate Service Titan. Uh, what they did is they took an XD Titan uh, diesel, and they actually get it to stretch, so the that's frame a, is a little yeah, longer. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. And that's a midnight edition? Yeah, because it's blacked out badging and lights, but this is for the Red Cross. Okay. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be at the Miami Auto Show um, this month. And after the Miami Auto Show is done, Nissan is donating this truck to the Red Cross, so they will use it for support um, during you know, natural disasters yeah. and other... And that's a uh, diesel? Yeah, this is a Cummins diesel, 5 liter. But cool. look at... Uh, that looks, check that out looks the, awesome. Yeah, check out the back of it. It's got a full... Um, gas tanks. Uh, well, yeah, extra gas tanks, but this is a full living quarters. Oh, really? So you can, you know, like that's, a command center. That's the support people actually will camp out in that thing. Huh? Yeah, and so help people and check it out on the inside. Right. Well, here. they should send it to us so we can break it in and actually review it fully because that's, yeah, that's great to have pictures. But well, we can take we, it off-road. We can take it at Moab. We can do all kinds of stuff with that. A uh, 75-gallon wow. fuel tank on this puppy. Well, that's cool. So wow. it can go a long way. Now, yeah, this is an 18? Really? Are you is, is it, I'm just wondering. Is it 2018? Well, 19s just came out. Well, there, Texas. there's a question leading to that. That's why I'm asking you. Well, let's say it's not, because <laughs> well, they've been working on the okay, shot. Whatever the hell it is. But What's anyway, the question? The, the question is, 2019, they doubled. Well, they've increased the size of the def tank by 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking for this rig, that would be cool. Oh. See, that's what it is. That, but that's on the 19, and I yeah. think it's on both so the XD and the. If regular. they increase the fuel tank on this. It would be smart for them to increase yes. the def tank. Otherwise, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. You run out of fuel. You got no def. Uh, I guess you could do other things to fill it up. But. So there's a there's a question oh. here from Carcane who says, "Best used truck for under ten grand." Oh. Well, uh, well, that's kind of vague. This which, is in this is in the oh, chat room. Okay. This is in the chat room. It's kind of vague for ten grand. I would say I would go for a half ton. Yeah. If you can find a used truck, because. It, you know, it's bigger than the midsize. It's not quite as an expensive truck or expensive to maintain as a heavy duty. Yeah. I would, what would you well, say? Ten thousand dollars can be pretty old. You know, that's just how these trucks are. It's not like it's a good deal anymore. I mean, you're gonna have to really look around. Look, actually, go to some neighborhood uh, uh, flea markets and neighborhood garage sales. You might pick up something like that because it does happen, especially in a rich neighborhood where they don't know what the hell to do with stuff. It's just underway. They may sell it cheap. I've seen that happen. But ten thousand dollars on a brand is is tough because you know I mean sure you can get a Toyota you can get a you know a, a Nissan some of that stuff has got a little better reputation for longevity but you're not going to get those as cheap as you would something else so mm -hmm. you know you want to figure out you know some kind of brand maybe it's something you're used to working on because you're going to work on a ten thousand dollar truck it's going to have two hundred thousand miles and it may need a few things so yeah that, that that's tough but that that's kind of a really too broad of a question for us to be accurate with that. But, I mean, I, I feel for you. If that's what you got to do. Look at Craigslist, do all that stuff, and spend a lot of time, and let your mechanic look at it, because there's going to be some right. issues that Absolutely. you may not know about. Absolutely. Uh, there's another question here from Chris Logan, who's asking a reliability question. Okay. Um, EcoDiesel has had some failures in the last couple of years. Do you think the 3-liter Power Stroke from Ford and the Duramax from Chevy will have a similar problem, reliability problem? We. Well, I, I can't answer that right now because we haven't yeah. even touched those engines. Right, so, right, um, yeah, and that's, that's the, yeah. That's, there's no way of knowing. Right, and that's, it all depends on how you take care of them and a lot of that stuff. So, right. we well, don't that, have enough data to really help you with no, that. No, 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 and the 3-liter Power Stroke V6 has just gone on sale a couple months ago. Yeah. So there's not enough data on that yet. Sure. Um, we've tested one on, uh, yeah, already. Yeah, it'd be nice if they gave us stuff for, you know, six years or something, and we could tell you that. So we'll tell you in now. six years. But you know what I'm happy about is that GM is doing a straight six. Yeah. Because that's, you know, semi-trucks use straight six engines, right? Well, they use both. They use V8s and right. V8 six, and I would say, yeah, six is probably more popular. Well, but the straight to, configuration. Yeah, right? I was trying to think of, you know, in my days in semis, the four and a quarter cat was a 3406, which was a six cylinder Caterpillar engine. So, but yeah, big volume. Yeah, right? and our big, farm big tractors. Engines. Yeah, our farm tractors had six cylinders, and a lot of them still are, but a six cylinder actually, and I'm not, I can't even remember the, the rules for it, but they can create torque easier than a V8. A V8, you got to do special things to it. I'm really tickled at how they've done that with V8s, because V8 will give you a little more acceleration. But an inline six has all that torque, so it's made for trailers. But yeah, it is. I, I think that maybe that's a direction to go, because it's still so popular in a semi line. And, and we'll, uh, we'll have to see how it drives, right? And right. See how it works. I mean, there's a lot of questions on that. I'm just hoping it's got like super fuel mileage. That's my hope for that engine. 
Yeah, well, let's hope. So far, we have 28 MPG. Uh, Marusio Enrique says, what about the Mini Raptor? Mini Raptor, oh, you want to ring it? Five dollars! Trucker Dan. From Trucker Dan's Trucker videos. Dan, as always, thank you so much. My connection absolutely sucks. Uh, can wa cannot watch. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry, Trucker Dan. I, I think our connection here is pretty good, so uh, you can watch the recording of this later when, when we finish. Sorry about that. Um, but getting back to where were we? Oh, Mini Raptor, the Ranger Raptor. Well, well it just came oh, out in Europe. They're asking us about that. Well, it just comes came out, out in this Europe. summer in Europe, doesn't it? Oh, Isn't even that? even next yes, summer. Yes, I think it's the summer coming. So we still have to wait many, many months yeah. or years. Um, don't we don't have any information yeah, about that. Yeah, and I don't know if we're still on for the Australian thing or not. Right, um, well, we were going to go to Australia to drive a ra Ranger Raptor. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of logistics because we have SEMA coming up. A Los Angeles Auto Show in Detroit, so we're, we're still working yeah, on that. Yeah, there's only just a little more time before you get into the really hot weather down in Australia. We don't want to go down there and die. Well, that would be cool. No, like it would be cool. Maximum temperature. Very, very hot. No, no. Me, um, I'll go there when it's hey, bad. Hey, Mr. Chuck, uh, yes. you had a question uh, from one of our readers about dual trailers. Okay. Do you want to touch well, on we that first? we got several of them. We, we can touch on that. Uh, so there was a question. Uh, what, what was his Yeah, name? a question about pulling two trailers. I'm needing to pull a camper, Kyle. Kyle yeah, a camper as well as my four-wheeling truck behind my pull truck. You guys did a video where you pulled two trailers a while back, and the second trailer weighed 10,000 pounds. What hitch did you have on the front trailer to rate it for that high? Uh, well, that was a gooseneck, and that's the thing, too. I mean, there's several things I want to talk about on this issue, and that is uh, where we're at, you, can, you have to have a gooseneck up front, and then you have a bumper pull in the back. So or a fifth wheel, right? Well, can you yeah, do a fifth wheel? yes, yes, fifth wheel pencil. You can do anything you want, but that combination. Okay. Now, now, if you're on the East Coast or if you're in Canada, you have to have a fifth wheel and a pencil, a commercial hitch. Okay. And like a semi, a fifth wheel, and you know that's it, it's interesting. Talk, but just between that briefly, uh, for all these decades, the gooseneck was always rated higher, and that was by the truck manufacturers because the gooseneck was stronger. It was a better. It was a it ball joint. It, it worked better. It would tow more, and it, it was more dependable. And a fifth wheel, not a fifth wheel on a semi, that's a giant thing. A fifth wheel, like an RV, it was a smaller one, they were loose, bad connection. But it, the gray hairs loved them, the blue hairs loved them, and that's what was out there. But, you know, up until Nissan, or not Nissan, up until Ram last year actually rated for their big truck, their big one ton, mm -hmm. uh, a 30,000 pound fifth wheel and equaling a 30,000 pound gooseneck. Before that, it was always about four to 6,000 pounds between those two rigs. So now Nissan, or not Nissan, Ram, has found a way to do that to where they can rate their truck and they have the right hitch to pull 30,000 pound fifth wheel. So that's that story. But um, in the East Coast, Canada, they don't want you to do that. But here we do it. In most of these, like horse trader factories, when they're selling and delivering to a dealer, they usually haul two trailers at a time, which means a lot of them have already have a hitch on the back of the big trailer and you just slide a receiver in it. It has the, the receiver hitch. You slide in the stinger, the ball, the receiver hitch. And go, and so my trailer's like that. It had that part already welded on there, and but there's you don't know a rating for the hitch on that trailer for the back of it. But it's like if you're a commercial hauler, you would not want to do doubles. You would want, unless you're in California where you have to, you would want one big trailer one time loaded up all the way and go. Other than loading two trailers half as much load, that doesn't right. make any sense. But for your situation or my situation, I, I haul two horse trailers to go to horse trailers and and. And display the traders and all the stuff on them and all the new new accessories that were coming out there so, and so, technology. But in his situation, it makes sense. But you get a gooseneck, and it all depends on what the axle rating of your truck is. I mean, you're in your truck. You got to find out what your payload of your truck is. So what your pin weight rating is, what your trader weight rating rating is, and then from there you can configure the traders. I mean, you may want a, a ten thousand pound trader in the front, five thousand pound trader in the rear. There's all that. We got to know what your truck is capable of. So it's it's a math question. We got to do a lot of figuring to get that there. But we so do you, a lot of math in our book. Yes, too. the book will tell you. You killed the book. I'm sorry. The bus. So we got a backup book. <laughs> but the uh, that is what you want to know. Get the facts and then do some calculating. And I don't know how you're going to find out what the hitch on the back of the front trailer is rated at because there's not like anybody that rates those. So yeah. So by the way, we don't do a lot of math in the book. We we talk about you know picking the right truck and trailer. But I think to just to summarize the question here. 
he was asking about towing two trailers, but there's different regulations across the country, right? Right, right. Some states allow you to pull two trailers at once, some don't. Yeah, in Colorado you can with a good Yeah, and like Wisconsin, I think it's Wisconsin or Minnesota, if during rush hour they give you a big fine for pulling doubles. So there's yeah. a lot to look so, up in where you live. And exactly. the question was, and specifically, so how did you pick the tr the hitch on the sec on the trailer to pull the second one? You went out and bought one, or oh, how no, did, the, how fir did... the first trailer was a gooseneck, so I had a gooseneck ball in my truck. I know, so but, but how did you attach the it. second trailer? Well, that's what I was saying. I want a lot of those trader those uh, trailer manufacturers will put a hitch on it so that their guy can put a second trailer on it and tow two trailers. So your trailer already had my a hitch. trailer had the hitch. What if you the don't? Receiver. Well, then you got to somebody weld it. You got to know what you're doing and all that. Okay. So that's what you'd want. You'd want to take care of because that may not be easy. And there's a lot of the thing too. A lot of fifth wheel trailers will come with that receiver hitch because, like in Kansas and several places, they'll pull a boat behind their RV. So their trailers mm -hmm. are set up for it, and then that trailer manufacturer can give you the specs on what that second hitch is rated for. And I would suggest in a lot of cases you use weight distributing hitch on the second trailer as a bumper pull. But yeah, so RVs are actually, you can get numbers on RVs for pulling that second trailer with those manufacturers. Okay. That's one place to start. That just sounds, I see people towing a fifth wheel with a boat behind it. Right, that's or what a we're fifth talking about. Wheel. Fifth wheel with a little Jeep behind it, or yeah, a little or side a by side. Razor trader pulling one of these monsters right. behind so it. It's pretty common. It just it just, it looks impressive, but it's kind of a pain, right? If you need to go to a gas station or something like that, you really need to know what you're doing. Well, yeah, you need to make and sure you can pull through and pull out. That's right. What it is. You're not backing up. We easily. have backed up doubles, and it's not easy. And right. semi guys know how to do it. Sometimes they'll back up triples, and that's really crazy. But they're also a fifth wheel on a dolly and something different too. Right. So El Taco is asking Andre, do you speak Spanish? Uh, no, senor. Uh, no, I, poquito español. no, I don't speak Spanish. I do speak Russian pretty fluently still. Um, um, Juan is asking, when is the 2024 Super Duty going to debut? Uh, thank you, Andre and Ken. Thank you, Juan. Um, the 2020, we don't know exactly. They said that there's going to be an update for the next, for the Super Duty coming within the year. Um, 2020 is going to be an exciting year for heavy duty trucks. That's because right. Ram yeah. has said that the heavy duty in the next gen is going to debut in January. So that's good. Um, we know GM heavy duty, the new one is coming. We're not exactly sure when. Um, and then the Ford is going to update their truck, maybe with a 10 speed. We don't know exactly what's I'm, happening. I'm betting on a 10 speed. And Too maybe with, a, with that 7.3 liter V8, the new V8. Yes, that should be a, that could be a 2020. I would hope so. Maybe. We, we don't, yeah, we we just don't, don't know. know for we don't sure. Know. You don't have a mole in there for I, that? Well, if you guys know anything, please let us know. Yeah, give us the inside scoop, man. We ask, won't tell anybody. Ask at tfltruck.com. You can send us an email. Somebody here wants us to write another book. Is that Greg Leonard? I want, want you to write another book because it's not going to happen with me. Uh, about what? It's a Truck Nuts 2. He says you truck should make a Truck Nuts 2. Um, uh, you have Truck Nuts 2, don't you? <laughs> So anyway, I, I'm excited about the book, but it took a lot of effort and we didn't sell a lot of copies. So right now it doesn't quite make sense for us to yeah, another one. Yeah, we were like number one for I, like a year and still didn't sell enough to make it make money. Yeah, we, we wanted it to make, you know, to be a financial success and it hasn't been, yeah. but we're still glad we did it. I'm really happy. Yeah, I mean, it's it an experience, experience to have, but you know, we didn't sleep for like five months. It was insane. Yeah, it was not very easy. Uh, we had more questions here. Mr. Truck, your next truck, gas or diesel? Gas. Okay. Now, Me too. I, and I used to pull more trailers. I always got diesels, but now I'm pulling lighter trailers. Plus, we have so many, you know, media trucks, and I've got four trucks now. My next one, the I'm project trucks. Project trucks. I'm pretty sure the next one's going to be a midsize because parking lots. My gosh, there's no place to park. Like I got a seven foot flatbed on the one I'm driving now, and I'm always parking next to somebody's mirror. Somebody's oh, I, I, it's time with with four trucks. I got enough trucks to pull trailers and do errands and do all that. So a midsize I can park. Plus, like I, like I talked about before, I'm old. makes my family older. So I got a lot of nursing homes to go to and hospitals and probably some funerals. I need something that gets really good gas mileage that's, that's small that I can throw the grandkids in and take off. That's and also more affordable to start, right? A gas truck. You don't have to invest initially in a diesel truck, right? Right, right. And diesels, so. we all love them and, and people buy them. But, they, you know, you get them, you know, people spend a lot I, of money on those puppies. I, and, I'm a, I'm a conservative kind of guy. I would agree because if I towed every day for myself, I would get a diesel, but I don't. Exactly. That's that's how you decide these things. So, um, as it is, I would go for a gas truck next time, too. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with diesels, but look at the investment. You spend ten, eleven thousand on the engine and the transmission. you got to pay that back with extra fuel, better fuel mileage, and that takes a long time. 
I mean, the little diesels are really interesting to me, and I'm, I'm still looking at them, so I'm not sure. If, if, if I get the right deal on a, on a midsize with a diesel on it, that might be the thing. I just don't know yet. But, uh, yeah, I need, to, I need to scale down. I don't need five full-size trucks. <laughs> right. I really that's, don't. That's cool. So. Uh, Juan says that uh, everybody should write in capital letters so you can read it. Well, you can That's still good. read it, right? I'm an old man. Well, I, I can't if I squint really good. I, yeah. yeah, it's going by really fast. But it's so in Russian guys, now. What's this? Korkane, Nakaduka, Duka, Bukawa? What language is that? She's writing in Russian. That's Russian. Um, wow. He says, thank you, Andre. Is that a special typewriter that does that? Uh, he says, thank you. You're a very special host. Is that uh, what he and, you do, and you do oh, a great video. He could sell it. You suck ass. We would know it. I can't read that. Uh, is I'm, that what he says? Yeah, he says, благодарю вас, uh, благодарю вас за то, что вы такой отличный хост и делаете отличное видео. Yeah, that's so. just like 20, 20 consonants and no vowels. I can do that, too. <laughs> Go on. You, you, should, you should learn some Russian. I should learn. Yeah, that's my goal in life. But, uh, okay. There's a question about Nissan Pro 4X, if I like it. Um, I did like it. I took it on a vacation. Well, yeah, we, you've got that um, long-term yellow one. That's awesome. Yeah, the Pro4X that we have as a crew cab is yeah. a long-term loan from Nissan. Right. So um, the only thing, the only complaint I had, um, you know it has a seven-speed, right, uh, for yes. the gas engine? Yes. B but it was just shifting. It wanted to be in a lower gear when towing. For example, I was kind of on a flat highway. Uh -huh. It was shifting to fifth and fourth, and it was a lot of RPM. Were you in tow haul mode? Or? Yeah, I was in tow haul mode. I was towing a 6,000 pound boat. Huh. I was fully loaded. But I felt like the truck was, it had power, but it was straining too much. I'll be darn. You know, well, what gear ratio? Of course, that gear ratio could be a two, 293. Yeah, it's right. a crazy number. But, but the seven speed is supposed to, you know, sure, a little change over the first ratio. Year, yeah. Well, that, um, that, uh, that's, you know, I like that Pro 4X when we did the media but, launch. We went off road with right. it. I, I was impressed with how well it did off road. But, but it was really good. Comfortable truck. My family commented on how good the interior was. Yeah. There were cup holders everywhere. They really loved it. It was comfortable. It was big. Yeah. Um, so a lot of good things there as well. They probably liked it better than a Hummer or that H2 or whatever. Hey, don't talk bad about a Hummer. <laughs> no, I still have the H2 that we had here. Um, let's keep going. More questions. You want to get some more paper questions? Or yeah. You do you want to hit one of these questions? How about from the ben from Benjamin? Benjamin. Okay. Can you do a head-to-head -head matchup for two competing vehicles for best gas mileage? The Ram Eco Diesel and the GMC Canyon Diesel. Picking between the two is quite a little conundrum for me. Right. Excuse me. So you guys could be very helpful there if you think it would be a great matchup. One specific question is, will they both tow similarly since they're rated the same tow weights or there's some benefit larger dimensions of the Ram? And that's, that's, that's amazing because they are close to the towing capacities. They are close on fuel mm -hmm. mileage. Yeah. So, so what would be... Specs. Yeah, they're very, very close, which is a surprise. First of all, the EcoDiesel Ram, the previous gen is kind of going away, right? Because they have a new truck. Mm -hmm. And the new EcoDiesel is coming next year. So right, and... right now, it would be hard for me to get an EcoDiesel. Because could, we could get one from an uh, owner, oh. right? To do this match, to do this video, wants. yes, right. To do right. this video, that would right. be difficult for us to do right now. That's true because there's a lot of you know, insurance questions, liability questions. But when the new one comes out, but this is a tough question because it's a half ton versus mid size. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, you got the exhaust brake on the Duramax, baby Duramax, which I like. You don't have it on the Eco Diesel from Ram. But the deciding part for me would be. You know, the width, the width and the length. Longer wheelbase, wider truck is the formula for a better towing vehicle. I mean, you can get by towing with something small, but think about your mirrors are further out because your body's further out. Mm -hmm. Your wheelbase, that wide body, we all like wide body. Like yeah. we are wide. I'm a wide body journalist, but okay. that gives you stability because you're not going to let the trader move you as much. So I think having a full size truck and a trader is an advantage. I'd only pull certain traders with the midsize, I've got to the right size and the right width. Because some of those big RVs can get you in a lot of trouble, I think I would go with the full size on the Ram on that. And yeah, you got to find out all the questions you're talking about to see what's new in that thing. Whatever they're going to do new to that diesel, because you know it's a new truck. We don't so, know a lot about it, right? But, so when right. you figure that out, that means that's going to you're going to wait a little while till that comes out, and then you get some reviews and see if we get a chance to spend some time behind them. That would be good. But that's that's my theory. Get that wide body. And a longer wheelbase always helps too. More stable, right? Yes. More, more stability. Yes. Um, ignore that noise. Uh, we're in the studio still. Um, the there's a question here from Dave Lusk. Andre, why did you get rid of your old Duramax? I had a 2002 2500 Chevy crew cab 4x4. Yeah. Right. I was kind of um, wondering about I that I had it myself. for 10 years. I bought it in a. You got tired of it then. Well, I, 
both. I was a little tired of it because I had it for 10 years. Yeah. I did change injectors on it three years ago, approximately. That was a huge investment because it was expensive fix. Um, and then I had a couple of more issues recently. There was like a transmission line was leaking for the cooler. That's an so, Allison. You can yeah. build those forever. Yeah, I know. It was you a five-speed. You had the right speed. combination. It was had, a five-speed. You, you had the truck that you could rebuild forever, right. but... But I cut. I didn't want to keep putting more money into it. And also, I was a little tired of... I wanted something else, so I got an H2. Well, how far over 150,000 were you on it? I was at 175. 175 approximately miles, so thousand miles. Well, yeah, well, I think um, you should have just kept collecting them like I do. Don't get rid of them. I don't have a big driveway. You, have a, you have a good it? place to uh, yeah. an acre of land. I don't have an acre. Maybe well, when I move, I'll I'll collect them. Yeah, you got to collect these trucks. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I you, it's nice to have something new. I mean, but I don't think you're gonna have the Hummer too long. I mean, that's kind of weird too. I, I'll probably sell it in a year yeah. and get something else. Yeah, um, that's. Not, there's that's, a question about testing base model trucks or base V6 trucks. We, uh, we've done that. We've done some of that already. Yeah. We had a base Nissan Frontier, Final Frontier, uh, long series, uh, which was awesome. It was about $19,000. Yeah. We, had, we did several videos with that. Right, right. Yeah, um, that, you guys went to Moab with that. You went all over with that. <laughs> yeah, we you did. dropped one of my ATVs out the back of it. So you had all kinds you of experience. You saw that, right? I did. I did. <laughs> um, but anyway. And, and we tested base model heavy duties. Yes. Three quarter tons, right? Yes. We had an F-250. Right. We had a Ram. We also had a Chevy. Uh, we'll we'll be doing more of that as often as possible. Right. I'm getting a couple of more base trucks at the end of the month oh, you are. for the gold hitch. Base well, trucks. Well, actually, uh, in November, not this month, but in November, I'm getting a, like a V6 Ram Eco Diesel. Oh well, is that yeah. in a base unit? Or uh, what are you talking? It's about? It's going to be a tradesman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm get, I'm trying to get a variety of trucks, not just the high-end trucks, but also more affordable, like in the $40,000 range for half tons. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of money, but oh. it's not 80. Yeah, you it's really, 80 grand. and that's hard to do because of course the manufacturers are going to push their most expensive models. They want to make the green because there's more markup in the more expensive trucks. So that's the goal of the manufacturer. So they're, they, they, they resist that a lot. And Andre is good about pushing at him. He goes and beats the tar at him, gets hold of his moles and his, and all of his leakers, and they go after those, those manufacturers. Wait, how are you talking about my moles? <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Uh, <laughs> no, um, yes, we want to do a lot more long-term tests, and you guys have some questions about this. We, we actually purchased some vehicles. We have a Land Rover long-term. Yeah. Um, before we leave, we have to close this video. Um, Wait a so, minute, we haven't, we haven't answered David's questions. Okay, do you want to touch on this really quick? Yeah, if you read it, then I can understand it. Oh, oh wait a minute. Okay, you, I can read it. You read it, it, then I'll absorb it so I can answer it. Okay, so David says, I have towed a 36-foot Coachman travel trailer weighing about 8,000 pounds with my 2010 F-150 for a few years, but it's not enough of a truck. I want to go to a three-quarter ton. I tow about up to eight times a year. But 36 feet, that's a long trailer. Ah, that's a normal the, trailer. Yeah, I, I mean, no, it no, seems it's a longer. long trailer. Is it? Well, my boat trailer is 24 feet. That's a boat. Yeah. Anyway, and yeah. We, te we test with a 20 footer. Yeah, mine's, footer. Guess mine's 26, but I would say if I just get a travel trailer to stay in, I would get at least a 36 footer. But would you recommend staying in a half ton market or moving to like a gas? He's asking about a gas three-quarter ton. That's simple because he doesn't feel safe in the in the half ton. So yes, he should get three-quarter ton. You get more bearings, you get he a little more weight, little heavier, heavier springs, and heavier. it doesn't move around as much. You will feel a little safer in that heavier truck. So which uh, gasser would you well, recommend? Like a Ford gasser? Uh, well, new heavy duties are coming out next year. Yeah, they, and, and we, we don't know. see the seven three anytime next year would be a miracle, but. I, I like that Hemi 6.4. I like the Ford 6.2. And, you know, the, either one of those I think you'd be happy with. I, Enough power, right? Yeah, the 6-liter GM, I mean, it's it's incredible the way that how well it lasts. And the 410 rear end, I just don't think it's got enough power. So I would go with the 6.4 uh, Hemi or, or the Ford. Okay. It all depends on your preference. You do the 150, so if you're leaning toward Ford, you'd be happy with the 250. That's the thing. It's a mental thing. You know, if you like a certain brand and you try to switch, you're always going to have some weird thing in your head saying, oh, you screwed up now. But, you know, so you, you, there's psychology involved in these buying trucks, too, as well as, as getting all the data. And if you are open-minded and you can get past that little voice in your head, you should try them both out and see how it is. So many people get all locked into that one brand, and you really should try 
a new brand once in a while, and you got to be having, you, you know, you got to be open mind. It's final question, and then we'll let you know a quick update about our mega road trip that we did. We were on different teams. We were fighting right. against each other. Right. Henry says he's towing a razor, and we actually have a, a long-term razor on our other channel, TFL Off Road. Yeah, it's about forty feet long. It? It's very really long. Yeah, it's a big four-seater. <laughs> uh, he's towing a four-thousand-pound trailer with the razor across country from North Carolina to California, and he wants to know. Which truck to get? You know, when I was thinking about this question, I thought a mid-sized truck would work for him. You know, 4,000 pound trailer. Well, that's um, true. He can get pretty good efficiency. Yes, and you saw, you saw Roman's is on uh, TFL off-road. Mm -hmm. He has the Razor and he has it in my little trailer. Yes, and that 14 trailer, feet long. Yeah, that, yeah, and that trailer looks wide, but it's not that one. I pull it with uh, mid-size all the time. And it's you know it's two thousand pound trailer. You put a razor on, you might get up you know a little over three, but uh, that one does well. And you can put a weight distributing. That's what I've done on that one. And so if you're pulling with a little mid size, make sure you use a weight distributing hitch. And that will control that will control that that, that kind of a trailer. So I think four thousand pounds. Now or you are going to have to have brakes on it. And you're going to have the brake controller. So you want to get to that point, and that's not a big deal. And, uh, yeah, I think a small trailer like that would. And as we was asking about a trailer or a truck, truck, which truck to tow the Razor for? Yeah. You're right. I think a midsize, that sounds like the ideal situation for a midsize. Well, I, plus, when he gets to California, he can use that truck running around town. Yeah, and right? see, that that would be a single axle trailer, maybe a double, but a single axle does well. And I think a midsize could control it. And you wouldn't have to worry about leveling out as much. But do we use a weight distributing hitch? What are you holding in your chest over there? You're a, hiding something from me. I have a gift. A gift. So we did a long road trip, and we were working to edit that video for TFL Truck. Uh, Mr. Truck and Michael drove from Chicago to Denver yeah. to our office here in Colorado. Yeah. And Nathan and I drove from Los Angeles to our office. It yeah. was about 1,100 miles each direction. Yeah. And here is me and Nathan oh, yeah. on the California beach. Do you yeah. have an image of Mr. Truck? Holy oh, cow. Oh, oh, you there's, know, there's buffalo over here in this field, and there's antelope running back there. So we were where the the deer and the antelope play. Okay. If you heard that hot pop song. Sure. But that's Sailor Monument back there. That's not where they they buried Wild Bill Hickok. No. What? That shows the highest point in the state of Nebraska. It's right close to three corners. So it's just it's just a few feet from okay. Colorado Wyoming. But that's what that's all about is the so, highest point in the state of Nebraska. We each had to do challenges, and I wanted to give you a gift early. But you guys have Early. to watch this video because uh, this is a gift for you Nevada uh, from, loser. from Nevada. Looser? Right. Looser. Loser. What's a looser? Loser. Is that any spell? I think there's another O in there. No. Is that another O? No. But how can we beat so, you back by like 10 hours? Don't how tell can, them. How can we possibly be the, the you losers? Didn't, you didn't we were us. sitting back having sandwiches and you guys were stuck in some traffic jam. Right. Right on the other side of the world. The you guys got to... Loose, this is going to be a longer video, maybe okay, so 30 I'm a looser. minutes. I, I've, but, I've known some um, losers that were looser, but but uh, you guys have to watch this epic trip. We had a lot of fun. A lot of videos. It and, was. It um, was fun. We were at a, we were at the tallest building in Chicago. Okay, it was awesome. That's that's nothing. Uh, we we did cooler things than you. <laughs> yeah, you took a raft and jumped on a hot springs. That okay. was pretty we're, wild. We're gonna close the show. Thank you guys for joining, <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Okay. Uh. Looser. I've got my looser plates. Me, me looser, huh? <laughs> Lucy looser. I knew her. Lucy looser. I went to high school with her.